all the music we did, it's, it's to support the action, support the gameplay, and we got to create like a real, I feel like the musically there's a narrative that fits where the game goes to, and, and it really, it really works. I'll get your work, Max. Work that only a guy like you can do. We didn't want it to just be making heavy music for that, because ultimately, the other thing that people are really invested in this whole franchise is the story. To kind of look at a video game score in a different sense of actually communicating the same type of drama or um, melancholy in the music. If there's a certain scene, if we felt like we found music that really worked for it, like that was like the, one of the most exciting things was, because it's not like we're just making songs like we would for a record, it's we're making a score. Max is a very troubled character. He struggles a lot with drinking, struggles a lot with his past. So the score had to capture emotional, psychological aspect and the action of Max's character. The music for Max had to be dark and it had to be raw and it had to be very identifiable. And so for Max Payne 3, it was very clear that we would have to score this game. We've got men entering the building. Stay in your office, lock yourself in. We wanted to give Max a sound that really is an identifiable sound. And Health as a band has an incredible sense of who they are and a very strong identity. Their music is very intense, but it also has a lot of melodies and, and it's very moody. When we saw Health perform live, it was very clear that they were the ones who were gonna be able to capture this. It was sort of a thing like, hey, Rockstar Games wants to talk to you. And we're like, oh, I bet they're getting a bunch of bands for the next Grand Theft Auto or something. And then it was sort of like, oh, what if they asked us, like, score a game? Like, nah, that wouldn't happen. It seemed highly unlikely. Yeah, and then at the first, like, hey, so you guys want to do some music, you know, score for Max Payne 3? We're like, really? So. <laughs> I had a friend starred in the commercial for the first Max Payne, which is what I actually, when I first heard about it. So at the time, it was like one of the edgier games. Like this new game, this is the best like shooting physics ever. Like you sh shoot a dude and like you shoot him, like an arm, arm goes back, you shoot a leg, it goes down. Like it looks perfect. There's also just really cool details. Like as if you walked into a room virtually, you can pretty much shoot anything. If there's, if you're in a kitchen and there's a bunch of dinner plates on the wall, you can shoot them and they'll just, it doesn't, like, it doesn't move forward the story. It's not necessary for it to be there. It's just the attention to detail so it's like immersive that you feel like you're actually in the space. It's also, the, me not being like a game player, like that's just impressive to me like on a technological level in terms of you just imagine the amount of just code that goes into that. Like Rockstar is, is really serious about delivering a cinematic experience. You know, it's like this is, as they say, you know, top flight entertainment. Like this is this is it. I mean, it's, it's great and it's it's really good. So how, how we um, put music into an interactive game is we break up music into stems. Stems are individual tracks that contain one, maybe sometimes more instruments. And when stems are combined with each other, they're used to create different moods. Max Payne is much more of a linear game. Everybody thought because it was a linear game, we would know exactly what to do. And I think it was much more difficult in some ways than making an open world game, is actually having the responsibility of leading the player to that next section. So for example, in Stadium, what you'll notice is there's always a baseline that's kind of pulsating and leading you to that next part of the mission without completely kind of taking the action out of it. Deal with him first. I only got one shoulder left. There's no time. The money will be long gone. We gotta stay on the guy with the bag. Wait. I might have written a book on dumb ideas, but Passos sure wasn't afraid to quote from it. We did everything to video captures. They would send us uh, video captures of um of a, like a tester playing through the level. We'd record a ton of music and then to, with the video playing at all times, we'd edit it and sort of listen and watch it back with the game playing, with the game sound to see like what it would feel like in the game and like is it clashing, does it work? 
So we would think about it as the stem. So like the bottom stems are for like suspense or if it's a tense moment. The middle ones are for you know what they call run and gun when you're running and shooting. The top ones are like a full on gunfight. And then you can mix them around to make different situations. What we first started was like with our own sound palette as like uh, inspiration, just like stuff that we know or like tricks we can do with our sound that would be cool to do. Or, uh, or they'd maybe give us some notes based on our own song. And then we'd, we'd sort of watch the level where it was in the game and what the level looked like and felt like that, that would make sense. So there's a level set in New York which is like where the first Max Payne is. So that one we wanted to be like really referential to like the Max Payne theme. We kind of built it all around sort of Max Payne cello theme. And then the stuff that's in Brazil, which is the majority of the game, is just our own sound. So in this level, they're, they're trying to get the, the ransom in the bag and it's like really tense and there's like constant run and gunning between the action sex piece. So for this one, we have a driving, almost synthesizer-y tune for this one. That was like the centerpiece of the whole level. And we had that piece uh, first and it was really good. And then everything else we kind of built around it for the different types of like gunfights or, or whatever was going on. The level. Were they cops? You tell me. I don't think so. Pick up, pick up, pick up! When we had our first meeting with Hell, from the onset, we knew that we were going to do a vocal. We didn't know where it was going to live in the game. Um, and, and, after we, we played the game, we, we kind of figured out at the very end would be an amazing place to drop a vocal song. Based on how you play that final mission, vocal will come in at a certain point and it lays on top of what music's already playing. For us, it was kind of creating this first interactive vocal. The first time that people played it, that moment just killed. It was amazing. People reacted to it right away. But to replicate that same experience and that same feeling so that every time you play it, you get the same rush. And that was the, the trick of creating this interactive vocal. Being able to, to work so closely with an artist that's creating the music and put it in the game. To me, that was kind of the greatest accomplishment of this score, so that it creates the, the best experience for the player. For, for me, like, the dream would be, because like, Red Dead had amazing music, and uh, me and my buddy would be playing it, and every time it would be like, this music's awesome, dude. This game's sweet. Like, you, just, you just say that a lot, and like, that's, that's pretty much what we'd hope for. Mm -hmm. 